The Medical Impairment Rating Registry is available to help settle disputes when the employer and injured worker disagree on the impairment rating. The registry is made up of about 80 board-certified physicians across the state of Tennessee who have been specially trained to conduct medical impairment rating evaluations. These physicians include orthopedists, neurologists, psychiatrists, internists, plastic surgeons, family practitioners, occupational medicine physicians, and others. Most injuries fully heal and the worker fully recovers. However, some injuries never fully heal. In these instances, the physician will use a book called the AMA Guides to express the worker's permanent impairment as an impairment rating, which is expressed as a percentage. Impairment ratings are very important because they help determine the amount of permanent disability benefits workers may be eligible to receive as a result of their workplace injuries. If the injured worker disagrees with the impairment rating assigned by the treating physician, maybe believing the rating should be higher, the injured worker can obtain another impairment rating from another physician. In that instance, the injured worker would have to pay to have another doctor perform an independent medical examination. The employer would not pay for the second evaluation. If the second doctor's rating is higher, it creates a scenario where there are two different doctors with two different opinions concerning the impairment rating and the parties likely disagree as to which rating is correct. This raises two questions. Which rating is correct and who determines which rating is correct? The Medical Impairment Rating Registry exists to help answer those questions by bringing the matter before a trained physician who is unaffiliated with either party. The MIR physician's opinion, as presented in an MIR rating report, is based on solid medical evidence and correct application of the AMA guides. The opinion expressed in a medical impairment rating report is quite different from those expressed by a treating physician or the independent physician hired by the injured worker. Number one, an MIR rating is designed to be objective and impartial no party involved with the case is affiliated with the MIR physician. Number two, an MIR rating is focused only on the impairment rating. It does not usually address causation, apportionment, job restrictions, job modification, or treatment. Number three, an MIR rating does not usually require additional testing. Number four, MIR ratings are easier to understand the physician that issues these reports is required to reference the AMA guides to show exactly how the rating was obtained. Number five, MIR ratings are more accurate than other impairment ratings. Physicians performing these evaluations are specifically trained to determine impairment ratings. Other physicians and independent medical examiners are not required to have training and most are never trained. Number six, all MIR ratings are submitted to peer review, where another trained physician looks for errors. Impairment ratings produced by treating physicians and independent medical examiners are not peer reviewed. And number seven, MIR ratings are presumed to be accurate by the courts. This means that the MIR rating has more legal weight than any other rating. In fact, the MIR rating usually serves as the final impairment rating, which resolves the impairment dispute. Before either the employer or injured worker can request an MIR evaluation, there must be a dispute. A dispute occurs under three scenarios. Number one, there are different impairment ratings issued by different physicians and the parties disagree as to which one is correct. Number two, the treating physician has placed permanent restrictions on the injured worker, such as no heavy lifting or no stooping or bending, but has also issued a rating of 0%, where states that there is no permanent impairment. And number three, the employer and injured worker both agree that the treating physician's rating is incorrect and both voluntarily seek an MIR. Once the request for an MIR is accepted, the parties will receive a 100-mile list that includes all the MIR physicians who are qualified to perform the evaluation within a 100-mile of the injured worker's home zip code. The parties will then have 15 days to negotiate an agreement as to who the MIR physician will be. If no agreement is reached, the listing is randomly reduced to three physicians. This smaller list is called a strike list. 
the employer has three business days to strike a physician from the listing. Then the injured worker has three business days to strike a name. The remaining physician on the strike list will conduct the evaluation. If you have an impairment rating dispute and you would like an MIR evaluation, there are a few things you should know before you start the process. First, an MIR report will not, by itself, settle any claim. The Medical Impairment Rating Program was created to give parties another tool to help settle disputes. This tool is the Accurate Impairment Rating. Secondly, the Medical Impairment Rating Program is a voluntary process, that is, until either party requests to go through the program. Once a request is accepted, both parties must participate in the process and the employer must pay for the evaluation. Finally, the process takes about 8 to 12 weeks depending on how quickly the parties select the physician and the chosen physician's schedule. Requesting an MIR evaluation is easy. Just fill out the MIR request form and submit it to the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. The MIR request form can be found on the Bureau's website. If you have any questions about the form or the program itself, please give us a call or send an email and we would be more than glad to help you.